as you might know, we have recently acquired a new microscope, namely Leica Stellaris 8 Falcon. Despite resembling the old SP5 and SP8 microscopes, the Leica Stellaris 8 is a new kind of beast. It has a white light laser as well as new and improved detectors. It comes with a resonance scanner that allows quick image acquisition. In addition, it has the Leica Falcon, that is the Leica solution for flim threat experiments. And on top of all this, the Avostellaris comes with Leica Lightning, that is their adaptive image reconstruction method for improved resolution that, in theory, uh, can be run while doing light imaging. The white light laser allows the user to determine the excitation wavelength precisely within the range of 440 nanometers to 790 nanometers. This means that you can pick and choose your excitation wavelengths as you want. This means that uh, we can achieve the best possible excitation efficiencies, meaning that we can get more signal out with less light put in. Leica has renewed their detector family. Hide S is a high-end detector with a low readout noise. Uh, while it allows an option for photon counting, it's not quite as sensitive as Hide X in that use. Uh, this is the detector you should use when you make a cover slip correction. Meanwhile, the Hide X is uh, photon counting detector with the low noise. It can be used much like the height S, but it's even a bit more sensitive, especially when working with flim. However, too much light will break the height X detector and they cost a lot. So if you are doing a color slip correction, you should never ever do it with height X detector. In addition, there's something called height R which is basically like height X, except it's meant for farther, farther light. We don't have one yet, but we are getting one. All Stellaris detectors can be run in so-called photon counting mode, where, as the name implies, the system counts how many photons we get out from the sample in a given time. This works as the white light laser is a pulsed laser. The system measures the R level time of photons in relation to the pulse. This method allows uh, relatively accurate measurements of intensity. However, do the poor efficiency, this only works well with good samples. On dim samples, the imaging time gets exceedingly long. Besides allowing for photon counting, the hybrid X detectors can measure the time between the excitation pulse and the photon arrival. This allows us to filter the incoming photons by the time they spend on the way, in theory allowing us to reduce the background noise. However, as measuring lifetime reduces the amount of photons we can use, and as filtering the photons reduces that amount even further, this is not fast, nor will it ever work well with dim samples. Fluorescence lifetime refers to the average time the fluorophore remains excited. So basically our fluorophore here uh, absorbs a photon and electron jumps to a higher state. It will remain on the higher state for a while before collapsing down to the ground state and emitting a photon. The time the electron remains on the excited state is known as fluorescence lifetime. This is constant and is often called tau and it's unique for each given fluorophore. The background signal will also have its own lifetime and that lifetime will likely be very different from that of the fluorophores. This allows us to gate or exclude photons coming at such a time that we can assume them arising from the background. On Stellaris, this is called tau gating. And it's important to remember that tau is average lifetime, and in reality, these lifetimes are distributions. So whenever we gate uh, the photons, 
uh, to exclude something, we are also likely excluding some of the real thing now. The resonance scanner allows us to scan the sample with 8000 Hz frequency, which is 13 times faster than the default 600 Hz scan. In practice, we have to use some average and some accumulation depending on the sample, but usually we can still uh, acquire a reasonable image in less than a second or so, depending on the resolution needed. The fast scanning means low pixel dwell times, which in turn means lower phototoxicity. Uh, this is likely best used with bright light samples when we try to catch fast transient events. Like a falcon is meant for flame threat experiments. We can measure lifetime of the fluorophore as well as try to quantify changes in lifetime in fret donor due to presence of a suitable black sector. This allows us to look into protein protein interactions. In theory, this also allows us to imagine two similar colors with different lifetimes and then use the lifetime to separate the signals from each other. Notably, the white light laser means that we can work with almost any feasible flimfret pair. Lightning is Lakers adaptive image reconstruction algorithm that uses off-focus information to construct a super resolution image. This method cannot be used to quantify intensities and should be reserved for morphological studies. The leak claim that this can be performed in live experiments, but we have very little experience with it. We will tell you more when we have received the relevant application training ourselves.